All right, I've got two prints of the same coloring page and a pack of mounting squares. Let's see what we can make with these. So stick around. Hello colorists, welcome to Pencil Stash, a weekly show all about coloring. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to get all the new content and be sure to hit that like button if you're enjoying my videos. Hey there colorists. Today's episode is sponsored by Coloring Book Cafe, an online subscription service specifically designed to be your all-in-one destination for all of your coloring needs. With 70 plus printable coloring books in its digital library, an amazing master course put together by yours truly, and a private community of adult coloring enthusiasts. Coloring Book Cafe puts it all at your fingertips for only $9 per month or the even lower price of $79 per year. You'll immediately receive a ton of goodies, plus a new coloring book every two weeks. Now they have a limited registration window. It's only open for a few days, so act quickly to sign up. Now they do this so that they can truly cater to their members and provide an excellent customer experience. So check out the link below to see all that Coloring Book Cafe has to offer. They have a 14 day money back guarantee, so no risk at all to try it out. We'll see you there. Now in that vein, my favorite thing about Coloring Book Cafe's service is the idea of digital coloring books instead of physical ones. I can't tell you how many times I've colored a page in a traditional coloring book and kind of ended up being unhappy with it. Now I either chose the wrong colors or I kind of regretted some choices or in the middle of it halfway through, I, I thought of a completely different direction to go in, but it was too late to do it with absolutely no ability to redo the page without buying the book all over again. But with a digital coloring book, you can print that page as many times as you like over and over again, which is what I'm gonna do today, but for another purpose. Now I've always wanted to play around with dimension. So I'm going to print two of the same coloring page and we are going to do a fun little trick. Now with digital coloring pages, you choose the paper that you print it on. And this is what I like to use. This is Strathmore's colored pencil paper. Now it's nine inches by 12 inches. So you do have to cut it down, but that's easy enough with a paper cutter. And it's really this hundred pound weight or thereabouts that you're looking for that's perfect for use with colored pencils. So you just kind of pull it out of your notebook, cut it down and print it out in your printer. It's really that easy. And this is the page that we're gonna be working with today, this awesome octopus. And I think he'd look fantastic if we pull him off the page a little bit with a little trick that I've been meaning to try. So first, let's pull some colors and jump right into it. Now we have two prints of the same picture and that will be uh, clear as to how we're gonna use them here in a little while, but we're just gonna work on one of these for now. So you can put the other one aside. And on this page, we're just gonna focus on the octopus. Nothing else on this page will be colored except for him. So not knowing a hoot about an octopus's coloring, I looked it up and some octopuses, octopi, how do you say that? Octopuses are incredibly colorful. Truly the sky was the limit when it came to choosing what his colors were gonna be. Uh, but most of them actually have a lighter underbelly and their suction cups are even lighter than that in most cases. So that kind of gave me a good head start in terms of how I was going to approach this guy. So definitely helpful to look up resources in case you're looking for some inspiration. And I landed on a yellow and orange underbelly, focusing this deco yellow in areas that I wanted to highlight, since some of the octopus even have kind of a bioluminescence quality to them, which makes their underside glow. And the underbelly is actually one of my favorite parts of our finished octopus here, which is kind of funny because it's, it's literally the part that I spent the most time on. I really wanted to get this part right, especially because I knew that it would only add to that 3D effect, which we'll be creating later. So I suffer from this too, but it really does pay to take your time and put in all those little details, even when you're feeling a little bit impatient. Now, the most important part for me in selling this was the suction cup portion. I really wanted those to stand out so that they too had that three-dimensional quality. So back to my reference photos of real octopi. 
they have this little dot in the center of each of their suction cups. Uh, so I actually did two colors here, one orange dot and then one slightly smaller brown dot. Kind of just gives that uh, illusion of a little bit of depth there. Uh, then I surrounded each suction cup with um, the same uh, Crayola brown just to make them pop off the page. And I think it really makes a big difference here. Now for the main body, most octopi, I'm not, never going to say this right, most octopi have a darker skin uh, than their underbelly. So I decided to go with some uh, like real like bright and some burnt reds on top, as well as kind of this like banded bit of highlight to just kind of give him again, you know, the illusion that uh, the light is kind of bouncing off of the shape of his head here. And the last thing I'm going to do is just modify this eye shape just a little bit to match the real ones that I referenced. All right, we are done with the octopus portion, and we're going to put this page aside for a moment. This one is done for, for, for just a few minutes, uh, but don't worry, we are going to come back to it. So we'll grab the second page that we printed, and this time we're just going to color the background, nothing on the octopus yet. And originally, I was going to try to color the background kind of murky. I really wanted the octopus to stand out, but I couldn't help myself putting in some color. So I pro probably would have been better if it was murky, but oh well, I still like it. Now for the background, I used baby oil to blend. And you'll notice that I'm not really taking very much care um, to keep the colors from bleeding into one another because I thought it might actually um, help kind of give it that murky quality uh, to just kind of have the colors, you know, kind of, you know, bouncing from, from spot to spot to just kind of add to that murkiness. But it didn't really bleed that much to begin with, um, but it all works out in the end. All right, now that I'm happy with my background, we're going to address the octopus on this page. This one right here, even though we just colored one on the other page. But for this one, we are just going to black him out with a marker. Now you can use colored pencils or anything you like here. I just went with a marker because it was easier, faster, you know, all of the above. So just cover him entirely and try to be precise with your edges as you can be. You know, just kind of, um, you know, use all those little spots where the suction cups are and just, just try to be precise. All right, so now you're going to put this page aside and we're going to bring back our original octopus page. And now we are going to cut this bad boy out. Oh my gosh, in hindsight, these suction cups are super, super hard to cut out with scissors. So I have a better idea to just get some precision here. If you have a self-healing mat or even just a piece of cardboard or like something that you don't care about, just something that you can put on your desk, you can use a box cutter or an X-Acto knife to cut around all these little details. And don't forget to do all of the little kind of encircled bits too, like the white spaces that are uh, kind of enclosed by his tentacles. You don't want to forget those. And it's super, super hard to kind of go around all of his little, little suction cups here, but just do your best. All right, now that everything is cut out, I am seeing a little bit of white space kind of around some of my edges where I wasn't able to be as precise. So just to get rid of those, I'm going to cover those areas with a little bit of that same black marker that we used before. Okay, now we're ready to assemble. Now let's take a look at these mounting squares. I got these years and years ago, I think literally from like the dollar section at Target. I think they were for scrapbooking or something like that, but I knew that I would eventually uh, figure out something to do with them, and now is the time. Now these are little tiny foam squares with double-sided sticky um, on each side. So we're going to put these all along the back side of our octopus. And we're going to try to put them down like as far down on the tentacles as possible. So as long as that foam doesn't peek out, we just want to make sure that these puppies kind of stay down and aren't flopping around or, or, or get bent. And don't forget to take off the back side of the sticky tape. And then we're going to flip it over. 
And we're going to place it right down on top of our background piece, right on top of our blacked out octopus. But we're going to offset it just a touch, just a little bit, which will create a bit of a drop shadow effect, which will aid in giving him that three-dimensional quality like he's popping off the page. And there you go. What do you guys think? Now, I'm not sure if it shows up as well on camera as it does in person, but it looks really, really cool. And if you want even more of that three-dimensional effect, you can even double up on your mounting pads to just kind of give it a little bit of a higher rise. But here we go. This is what I've been wanting to use these for, but I've never had the opportunity to print out multiple coloring pages before. You know, if you wanted to do this in a traditional coloring book, you'd have to buy two copies. So I think that this is a super fun experiment. You could put this in a shadow box. You know, it's just a, just a really interesting way to make your coloring kind of pop off that page. So thanks again to Coloring Book Cafe for sponsoring this video. Please remember, check out all that they have to offer now while the registration window is open. Let's see what you can create. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.